we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed so we are looking at the church the new testament church our understanding of the new testament church is crucial to the possessing the nation's agenda it will help us in our worship of god you see when we talk about church it doesn't have any war so wherever you are, whether you are sleeping or in the marketplace, you are in church. So because we don't understand this, sometimes we think that we are we are secretly sinning. But where is the secret from? Because his eyes sees all of us. We don't close church as in going to church like this Sunday. After two hours, we are done and say church is over. It's never over. No, we are all members of the kingdom. And the church that he is building has no boundary. So this evening I'll talk about the fact of the union of believing Jews and Gentiles in Christ. The union of believing Jews and Gentiles in Christ. Now try to discuss why this union was quite important because we have studied that the new testament church is a community of believing jews and believing gentiles a community of believing Jews and believing Gentiles. So, from Ephesians chapter 2, especially the first 10 verses, the verse as we did study about two weeks ago now Paul traces the salvation of the individual Gentile and Jew the salvation of the individual Gentile and Jew yeah that both Jews and Gentiles are saved by grace. Through faith in Christ Jesus. So that was that is the first ten verses. Now this evening I'll look at verse 11 to 18 verse 11 to 18 now from verse 11 to 18 he moves to the abolition of their former racial differences yeah, the, the, the former uh, differences between the two of them. Paul discussed about how Jesus Christ uh, dealt with that. Then he moved on to the union, the union in Christ. And then to their formation into the church the new community now, of god and 
So firstly, the abolition of the enmity between them. Then their union in Christ. To the formation, their formation into the church of God. You see, one of the toughest things that the apostles had to deal with was bringing the Jews and the Gentiles to understand or to terms of the fact that they are now brothers and sisters was very difficult. And One of the things that we should all try to avoid is creating a bitter spirit between you and someone. When you even change and you want to repair, it is very difficult. See, it is not easy. <laughs> One of our apostles, my first apostle, apostle D.K. Annan of blessed memory, one day asked me a question. Now, what do I think about forgive and forget? What do you think about forgive and forget? You are an apostle, you should know. We are small for that way there. And so, who know? But I think that there was something going on in his I believe that he doesn't just accept this forgive and forget. It is not too practical. I will just end it here. But it is not too practical. So try not to create a meeting because bringing the two back is difficult. So bringing the Jews and the Gentiles to accept that they are one in Christ was tough. It was this that actually caused great trouble for the apostle Paul in the eyes of the Jews. See, the enmity between the Jews and the Gentiles was the greatest racial and religious differences the world has ever witnessed. Not just in, in the Bible, but the world has ever witnessed. And we still have traces of it. I don't want to go into it. But you can see that this thing that we call anti-Semitism is still alive today. The segregation had been long and widespread. I'm not saying that was long and widespread. Had been long and widespread. Even today, there are still traces of the tension between Jews and Gentiles in so, some particular regions. See, because the law of Moses actually set the Israel apart as a people chosen by God, they also puffed up and despise the Gentiles. The Gentiles also struck back with deep hostility. Which has come to be known 
as the anti-Semitism. See, the name uncircumcised or to describe someone as uncircumcised was an ethnic slave. Similar to the names we give to people uh, of tribes or nationalities that we despise. So we can feel something of a sting when you hear David actually tell Goliath a Gentile Philistine. And what is that? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Was the uncircumcision necessary? Who said? And it will be a cause of Brother David. Or just say why? And it's a mumrutunia or cassettia on your copper safi. This enmity was not just a tension between Jews and the Gentiles. It was. Institutional. See, in the temple in Jerusalem, for example, Jerusalem, non-Jews were restricted to the court of the Gentiles by a wall. And on the wall were no trespassing signs eh? which read I'll be reading it to you. Now, and non-Jew should not cross this law. Now, this wall. And they have written on the wall. So let's read it. Let's project it and let's. I'll take you to Jerusalem and back in some and few seconds. Let no one of any other nation come within the fence and barrier around the holy place. It's limited to only holy people. <laughs> Yudeni and now Ophi and men bearem when you da for men and men sacrum crumbia, memano macra. Whoever is caught doing so will himself be responsible to the fact that his death will ensue. Obi Biara, Obe Bomadin said, Obe ye exiasa de way and now Obetra first way no, or no one wabon who to, or no one and work on <laughs> so he'll be responsible for the fact that his death will ensue. The consequence will be death. Can you imagine that? So it was not just a tension, it was actually an institution. See, it is for this reason that Paul was almost killed in Jerusalem. See, besides the fact that the Jews actually didn't want to see his face, even the Jews who have converted into Christianity, they didn't like him. Because of his teaching, they think that he was fighting Moses. This time, they wanted to kill him because they suspected that he had taken some Gentiles into the temple. As chapter 21. From verse 27. As 21 from 27. 
when the when when the seven days were nearly over some jews from the province of asia saw paul at the temple they stirred up the whole crowd and seized him shouting fellow israelites help us this is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place that is the temple and besides he has brought greeks gentiles into the temple and defiled this holy place <laughs> I like the G version. The F. Abeka Konkrumbie. And so they despise the Gentiles. And the Obua Mama Mufo and him Tiakura. Verse twenty nine. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian in the city with Paul. And assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. And so, we know on the episode, we trophy mo, we chrono mo kane. And the no was to say, Paulo, they no aku asori fi ho. What made what will make this wrong is the inscription on the wall. Ni abema wey ayad chiwadi e ayen ya wachire e wa face wonu. The whole city of Jews was aroused, and the people came running from all direction. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple, and immediately the gates were shut. Na kronu nina bo chi na enkro fukono di mrika be buano na waso Paulo mu e chi nu fria sorry fi ho na entemara watu tu apulu numu. They're going to kill him outside the wall. Ye kukuno e wa sorry da eno eji. While they were trying to kill him. News reached the commander of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. Now, what is your Ekuno no assembly could do? A straw for a pimso, Safohino, no assumes, Jerusalem, you know, aye, saka, saka, saka. But but for this commander, Paul would have been killed. No, because I'm going to say, Saint Kenya Safohinia, Casma for Paul would deny him. See, but God, through Christ, created a new society. In which the ancient enmity between the Jews and the Gentiles was forever abolished. And so when you come from Christ, you know, you need to go through for a certain time. Ah, at now watch it. And that you have for any amount of money for me, you just go and cry. Ephesians two fourteen. We are sharing so far, man. The team you know, you must do nine echo. The first line says that for he himself is our peace. He himself is our peace. See, notice that now Paul is addressing the efficient church. And the church is made up of the Jews and the Gentiles as well. And he's teaching that Christ himself is their peace now one in church room no or can say christ to ankasa and it yang assume you in fact christ himself is our peace the question is a christ to ankasa and the yang assume you he did not say that he made peace but he is our peace one can say no and the why yes why one my young assume you there be no mom or no no yet young assume you yes but how can a person be peace how can a person be peace so let's go into details paul will explain it ephesians 4 from verse 14. now for he himself is our peace who has made the two groups that is the Jews and the Gentiles, two groups in the church, one, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, 
Now, he's not just talking about the physical world I spoke about, but that spiritual war that has divided them since Moses. Now, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, create out of the two converting Gentiles and the converting Jews one new humanity. If he that's making peace and in one body to reconcile them them the jews and the gentiles to god through the cross by which he put to death their hostility now wa fa se nua no so apata aka benu no abo onyankopon ho ni pedua ba akumu efri se o de ase nua no akum ni tan no he came to preach peace to you who were far away so now he's making reference to the gentiles who were far away and peace to those who were near the jews who were near now oba be kan so mdue ho asempa e kire mo a mo a kire kire na chesa ma me mu fo ho asem ni ene ho a wo ben ahei e yuda fo you can imagine the apostle for addressing the congregation and to our church ma for paul on the asafo no e ka say so he's addressing the jews he's addressing the gentiles but they are they are the church and verse when he made this statement, a Jew would turn and look at a Gentile. <laughs> I'm not sure they'll be sitting together. They'll be like Pentecost women sitting here, men sitting here. They'll just be looking at one another. Say, what is going on? Mijiri se wasafunumunu obowe so pe yuda fono bebi ya uwe shia wasode mo eni bebi ya ama me mufono so eshi anu obi ya abe shi shi eni yonko eni verse 19 yeah, consequenced as, as a result you are no longer foreigners and strangers you gentiles you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with god's people the jews and also members of his household <laughs> how can a person be peace how did jesus become peace to these two groups number one their union with christ necessary unites them with one another Boom, so we now, their union in Christ makes them be united to one another. Number two, he made in himself from the two, the believing Jew and believing Gentiles, one new people, the church. No, so simply put, he was sacrificed for their peace. Therefore, a man is the peace. The man Jesus Christ. Yes, just as Mika. Prophesy or Micah prophesy. Micah chapter 5, verse 2, following. Micah 5, 2, following. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, through you are small, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me 
me one who will be ruler over israel whose origin are from of old from ancient time now what but lay my a what if letter who saw say abu fra you da and pim and pim mu umuara and now be baba mommy now what be here is right so deep for no not not see me be free to take in three day free da ah in me i say now, no. very important because this verse is saying that out of Bethlehem will come a ruler, and the ruler has been existing since time. Now, we and one more year, a son said, Trust him, Richard said, Will be ye or can you need a few Bethlehem now? Will you know if you want or yet near what now? Now, verse 3 says that therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. And the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. And see, on the one ma I could see bra, a wolf will be be war. Bra, a wolf will be be war. Now, Ninianum and Kaye, Bessang, Ni Israel, Manso, Abba. You see, in the Old Testament, when we are talking about giving birth, they don't attribute it to a woman. But here, they say, when she is just re making reference to this virgin who will have a son. And then when the son is born, he says that, and the rest of his brothers will return and return and join the Israelites. And see, Oje Israel, and I say, you the four brothers, boma, or can a war, ya no one time can ma or can mema. Now so hey, or chemise, or wolf for your bar, a be wo na obedi penina. So, so when Christ comes, the rest of God's people, or their brothers, the Gentiles, the Jebusites, we all come back and join Israel. And what Christ Let's, let's take the big one. Verse 5. We read just the first line. Ready, go. For he will be a peace. He will be our peace. Now, when he comes, now, when he comes all the brethren of the Israelites will come and join and become one group. It's like four and a mama mufua a way chinina and be kambum ababe any pabako. So through union with him, the former combatants are united with one another in the new community called the church. And to one amukabum wa waka wan bum Christo ni pedriani muno ama wanga no wa ya tamfu no se se wwa babe ye if you crumu emma. Now all fleshly distinctions such as nationality, tribe, education race color age have been nailed to the cross in christ we are simply christians we christo mono ye ye a christo for bakopa ye ni sunu ye bia e da ye ntem bibi bia ra e ti se feso se be bia ni pani free en ton a obo eni kura office so na husu eni ni fi a wadi ni su ehunu da bi e bibia ni wo wa boni nyina asenuam e wo asenu anso <laughs> yeah, and even the kind of temperament and all that, we don't just bring them all in. We are simply Christians. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say something, but I will I will Is this lady in our church? <laughs> Hmm, I will say it. <laughs> so let's move on. Galatians 3, verse 26. So in Christ Jesus, I like the word so. In Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Full stop. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, now pay attention to this. Had what? Clothe yourself with what? Christ. If you say Mumudu do a wabomu a suko Christo Yesu Muno Mashe Christo. Now so the two of us are born again. In the Yembeni, what we and Fufro is a Nodna, I'm a Sadna. Of Israel, me me fi as now for her. But in Christ, that's what Christo move. We had 
we have clothed ourselves with Christ. What the Christo what Christo so from the outside, what you see is what is on the on us, Christ. It's Christ. Don't divide us. No, it's Christ. There be a Christo. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. Neither slave or free. Now you, you see that the church is a wonderful place. You can go to church with your house help. When they are singing and all of you in we want to dance, your other your house help leaves or you follow or whatever so we yeah. are all one in christ so yeah to do what you know yeah yeah baku christo munti yeah sabum neither slave nor free ah hey you near kwa and you know this year no is there male and female for you are all one in christ jesus if you belong to christ then you are abraham's seed see the connection once you belong to christ you now join the abraham's seed the israelites and as according to the promise even the contemporary church see we need to work at the unity of the spirit knowing that we have become one big family in Christ we need to work at the unity of the spirit you see the church it's a multi community. Americans will say multi community. American for be can yeah, not just say in quaudo bebri and the war as or in multi racial. We nipa a fee a maya hood was multi cultural. Nipa a war a mamma hood will be multi national. Nipa so I fee a mime hood was so multi generational family. Now a numuno, yes, say a ya want to a to us. I would do a yabus yabako. We regard no one from the worldly point of view any any longer. No, from the worldly point, no. no, no, no. We are we have clothed. We have been clothed with Christ. What the Christ and I say. Now, Second Corinthians five sixteen. And I want you to shout this verse if you can. Those of us who can read, let's go. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point, though we once regarded Christ in this way. We do no longer. Ain't it a free nay? Ye nimo be around one umfem. Now say you, Hunu Christo, one umfem mum poa. A fade ye nim no sabio. Then let's take the next verse, the big one. Finicus the game changer. Doom song. I always call this verse the game changer. Maybe I'm a frasa, Troy, baby, a dreese, and in such a time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. And this will be what Christo moi. Now, or your body of for no matter than you know, I trim now share and no man you know, I have for from where from this way free verse 18. Yeah, you should do what you know. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. From now on, we do not judge men in carnal earthly way. According to appearance, human credentials, or national origin. Now we see fellow Christians as precious souls for whom Christ died, we have clothed Christ Jesus. See, even denominationalism 
the division into denominations, I mean, to the institutional church should be a strategy than divisive. Yes, strategy of reaching everyone. It shouldn't be kind of divisive or divisive. Denominationalism should be complementary than creating dissensions, dissensions and discord. We are one in Christ Jesus. Every war of hostility is broken and should be removed. Amen. The church of God is a people not limited to a geographical location. Race or nationality. But we are spread across so that through them or through us, all peoples everywhere might be saved. So what we need to focus on is the purpose for which he has called us. Not the things that devise us. The purpose for which he called us. So next week, God willing, I will start discussing the purpose of the church. But I want you to turn to your brother, your wife, your son who is born again, your daughter, and say that you are my brother. You are my sister. We have been clothed with Christ. We have been clothed with Christ. What is important is to focus on the purpose for which he has called us. God bless you.